When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass-fed and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Seven tips to stay focused on your money goals on this episode of Shauna Shares Community Q&A. Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money Podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. This question comes from Amanda. Amanda says, I love your podcast and have been listening for over a year now, being inspired and working towards my goals. Maybe my question isn't really a question, but more like a request for a pep talk. I have four main money goals that I've been slowly working towards. Paying off my student loans, saving four months of expenses in my emergency fund, saving $3,000 in a what I call a oh shit fund. I can access the savings account much quicker than my emergency fund. And finally, saving for a house. For the past six years, I've been laser focused on paying off my student loans, But because of the pandemic, I decided to shift my focus on hitting my emergency fund goal. Recently, however, I've been struggling with staying focused on achieving the emergency fund goal. I now have only $9,000 left to go of my student loans, and I'm also only three months away from hitting my emergency fund goal. But now I'm getting the urge to basically use all of my emergency fund money to pay off my student loans. I know if I did this, I would feel awesome, but I know I would feel anxious knowing I had no emergency fund to fall back on. Do you have any suggestions for staying focused on the one goal before making a rash decision and jumping on to another? I know these are all good problems to have, but I really would love some words of encouragement or advice on how to stay focused on my current goal. You are right on, Amanda. This is a really good problem to have, but certainly not uncommon. You are not in the minority. Deciding what to do with your money is just a huge part, I think, of the money dilemmas and often the reason why we don't really change anything. We can kind of get stuck in the minutia. We know our goals, but 
we can kind of get all over the place with them from time to time. And then nothing is actually really moving forward. And what I love about your story is that you have been laser focused. I mean, you should be so incredibly proud of being able to be laser focused for six years. That is absolutely phenomenal. And I understand as well how awesome, (laughs) all in caps, it would feel to pay off your student loans. But of course, I also understand the anxiety around paying off the student loans and not having an emergency fund. Certainly what we've just come through with the pandemic in the last couple of years, I think it's kind of shown all of us that we just don't really know what's going to happen and when something is going to happen. And so better be prepared for anything. But it's so tough because and we can kind of sit back and we can prepare and we can overthink, but at some point we also have to live our lives So it's this real interesting, I call it like a dance that we do with our money and our goals. And it's constantly a a check-in to figure out what's most important. So let's run through some of these seven steps, I think, to really stay focused on your money goals, but also to evaluate just what the heck really matters to you. So the first one is when it comes to stress. We know that money can be a dominant source. If we go to talk to any therapist, they're going to tell us that the number, the one and two uh, items that people are coming to them most about are relationships and sex and money. (laughs) So it is just one of those things. And it's because it's so ingrained in everything we do. I say money touches every aspect of our lives. And it's true. It's hard to figure out something that we do on a day-to-day basis that doesn't somehow boil down to money. There was a study done in 2018 by Northwestern Mutual, a big uh, financial company, that said that a good portion of Americans consistently experience a range of negative emotions, such as anxiety, 54%, 25% of the people said all the time or often, insecurity, 52%, 24% of those people said all the time, and fear, 48%. So we've got those three big emotions with money. We've got anxiety, insecurity, and fear. And so what I find is they can almost keep us somewhat in like a a money jail, if you will. Now, this is metaphorical, of course, so go with me here on this analogy. But they can keep us stuck. And what happens when we're stuck is all of our our money language, our money story, our money blocks, all of those things, that those mindset pieces, they start to just bubble up. And we start to tell ourselves all sorts of things that are not necessarily true. And so we can almost sabotage ourselves when we get really close to achieving a money goal, especially something like paying off debt because of the weight of how that feels to us. So there's always a fear that we aren't making the right decision. And I'm a fan of both. Can we take almost like a teeter-totter approach? Maybe some of the money every month goes to pay off the debt, the student loan debt, and maybe some of the money goes towards your emergency fund. Now, that's kind of going against the idea of being laser focused on one goal, But what that approach does is it lets us see progress in both areas. And then once we get to a tipping point, once we get to, hey, our emergency fund is fully funded, then we go and focus all the money in our student loans. Or conversely, once we pay off our student loans, then we switch back to our emergency fund. So sometimes I feel if you are in a place of complete indecision, thinking about that uh, teeter-totter balance approach, whatever word you want to use for it is really helpful in helping you feel like you're meeting both needs without having to make that tough choice, which can keep you stuck in the anxiety, insecurity, or fear. So number two is thinking about this question. What keeps you up at night? So what plays over in your head over and over again, right before you drift off into la la land at night before you're going to go to sleep is it the student loan balance is that what is just 
echoing in your head over and over and over again? Or is it the emergency fund? Or is it something else, right? What is playing over and over in your head? What are you worrying about? What are you thinking about? It sounds like you would feel pretty awesome, to use your words, if you just paid off those student loans. And in my book, that is good enough reason to do so. But of course, I don't want to leave you without uh, any emergency fund, any OSHID fund. That is definitely very important. So I think another thing to think about is how long would it take for you to build up a new emergency fund if you went ahead and paid off all those student loans? Even just one month's worth of savings. So I don't know what your income is. I don't know how much money you're able to save every month. I don't know where the rest of your money is going. I don't know if you're funding a retirement plan, if you have any other debt. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes other than what you just told me. But maybe it might be a good idea to really do a deep dive into your numbers and to think about, okay, if I took this lump sum of money and I did just get rid of these student loans and I just basked in that moment of how awesome I feel. And not only how awesome you feel, how proud of yourself you are. I mean, that is a massive achievement, again, to stay dedicated for six years. To stay dedicated for 60 days is a massive achievement. But then look at, okay, how long would it take me to get to one month worth of emergency savings where I could at least feel like I have a little tiny pad? Another thing to think about in that equation is what kind of work do you do? Do you work in a very stable job where you're pretty confident your income is going to continue? Maybe there might be some bonuses coming up. Or are you self-employed where money can kind of be fickle from month to month? So those are some of the things to kind of think about when we're looking at the question, what really keeps you up at night? But I think no matter who you are, no matter what your money goal is, I want you to think about that question tonight when you go to sleep, like what is playing over and over in your head? And is there anything you can do constructively to help that fear maybe lessen a little? Not all of us have the luxury of being able to just take some money and pay off all of our debt. Not all of us have that luxury, but there is always one thing you can do. There's always one step you can take. So what is that? All right, number three, a great, a great, I love this, a great staying focused tip is just to have a money buddy, someone that you really trust, that you can talk to about your goals, that is going to keep you both accountable, but is also going to help you celebrate these milestones. Because Amanda, what you've achieved is amazing. Your small steps really have created a big change for you. And now you see the light at the end of the tunnel. You can see it right there. It's oh so close. And it's probably why you're feeling this need for a little bit of a pep talk. And anyone who is that close to achieving a money goal, you feel that. You feel like, wow, I need to need... I need someone to like rally behind me. I need someone to just give me a little bit of a lift, give me a little bit of confidence because it gets a little, it gets a little scary actually, which sounds strange to say when you get that close to paying off a debt or reaching a money goal. It's kind of like, oh, whoa, okay. Maybe there's something that might come up, something might happen. I mean, it's just, it's the land of overthinking. So I think when we're striving for our goals, it's easy to forget what we've accomplished. But I know that celebrating is a really important part. That's why I always say one of your money steps every week in your money checklist should be to celebrate in a small way, no matter what. No matter what happened that week, no matter what you did or didn't do with your money, it's saying to yourself, you did okay. You made it through. Here's a small little reward to push you through to next week. So back to the money buddy, it's finding someone who is non-judgmental. This is really important and it's really hard to find. So pick this person very delicately and I would really ask your money buddy, hey, is it okay? This is what I'm needing. Is it okay if I share some things that 
I just need to be super confidential. And whatever that is you want to share with this person, that's totally up to you. But pick somebody who's not going to judge you. He's not going to say, no, oh, I don't think you should do that. Or why are you doing this? No, they cannot counter anything they're doing. They're there for motivation. They're there to cheer you on and they're there to celebrate with you and also to give you those little day-to-day pep talks. Just the act of being open, I find also helps you in these tough moments when things don't go so well, when maybe you've made a decision and it just didn't pan out so well. Having somebody there who can remind you, hey, remember remember what you've accomplished. Remember, it's okay. It's okay. I know money feels very heavy. Money is very important to live our life. I cannot understate that enough, but money isn't all of us. It doesn't define us. It's not the authentic version of us. It is a currency that was created out of thin air (laughs) and we exchange it for all sorts of things. So it's also having a little bit of that perspective. I think that is really important, especially when we're trying to achieve a big goal, but it could be any goal. It could be just a small goal, really having somebody there who roots you on. And I will say from personal experience and from working with hundreds and hundreds of people that usually the money buddy is not your partner, your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or somebody in your family. Now, I could be wrong. (laughs) There are always exceptions to the rule, but usually it's somebody that is a good enough friend, but is not close in your circle every day, meaning they don't know all the ins and outs. That's just my perspective. That's what I've seen work really well. And that's what I've seen also keep this non, this non-judgmental place, because that's what you need. You need this safe space to be able to share these really intimate details. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash ETM. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling. 
you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. All right, number four. So we talked about number three, the idea of a money buddy, and that really rolls into number four, and that's to set some milestones along the way. So I think if you're going after a really big goal, like paying off debt or saving for a home or something that feels really big to you, set some milestone markers along the way. For example, if I'm trying to save $25,000 in five years to buy a house, that's a big number and I can get lost in the minutia and I can get lost from month to month. I could tell myself I'm never going to be able to save $25,000. I could sabotage myself. I could let all of the money stories can come up from my childhood, from my family. I could maybe think no one else in my family has bought a house. What right do I have to be able to buy a house? I could go through all the emotions. On the flip side, I could say, oh, you know what? Money is flush and flowing with me. I don't need to worry about it now. I'll think about it in like year, I don't know, two or three or maybe even year four. I'm going to have plenty of money so that this kind of goes both ways. Our thinking can sabotage us in a good way and in a negative way. And so it's our job from day to day to just kind of tell ourselves, hey, all right, Let's check back in with our goals. Let's look at any blocks or any money language or money stories that are kind of coming up for us and see if we can do our best to kind of push those away or at least quiet those to a gentle simmer. So if I'm looking at saving $25,000 in five years, I could say that's a big number, or I could say, okay, let's break this down into something that feels a little bit more manageable. That's $416 a month to save, and in five years, you're going to have $25,000. So maybe you decide to celebrate when you get to your first $1,000 saved, or $5,000 saved, or $10,000 saved. It doesn't matter what the number is, or how many times you celebrate on that road to $25,000, the important thing is that you get to make the rules. That's what's so fantastic about a lot of this. And Amanda, I think this is why you're in this situation where you're really needing this pep talk is it feels a little almost like you're feeling your way through the dark. The beauty is that you get to make the decision. Ultimately, you get to decide what works best for you, what works best for your life, and what is just going to get you to to feel really, really good? Uh, obviously, we want to balance the safety aspect of money. So I think it's amazing that you're thinking about that. But the idea is to not only break your big goal that you have down into these smaller chunks, but also to celebrate along the way. Because what that does for your brain is it stimulates your brain and it says, hey, you are making progress. So the same thing when we're paying off debt, obviously we celebrate like, oh, I only have $2,000 left, $1,000 left, $500 left. We do this when we pay off debt, but we don't tend to do this when we're saving money because we just kind of look at it like, well, saving money is the easy part. Paying off debt is the hard part. 
But in our brain, it's the same operation that's going on. And so it's important to not only tell yourself that you're going to celebrate these milestones, but write them out, put them on a post-it note, stick it on your computer, stick it on your wall, do whatever makes you feel like, okay, I am tracking towards that progress. I can see every day when I'm making conscious, intentional choices about my money, it's getting me closer. And the truth is, like in Amanda's situation, once she pays off her student loan debt and once she builds her emergency fund back up, there's going to be another money goal that comes along. Once you save for the house, there's going to be something else that comes along. It's it's just life. We're, we never get to the point where we kind of sit back in the chair and we're like, well, I don't have any goals left. <laughs> I've done everything. I've achieved everything. You know, you've lived life. You know that things just, they come up, whether they're good or not so good. Life just has a way of happening. So I celebrate those moments. It's, it's, it's how gratitude reframes and reshapes our thinking, particularly when we're feeling in a really negative place about our money. If we focus on every day three things that we're really grateful for, it may seem really elementary and it may seem like it, this cannot possibly be doing anything. But I challenge you, do that for 30 days and watch how things change for you. Watch how your thinking changes. Because when your thinking changes, you change your habits, you change your demeanor, you change the story, you change so many things. Even if your money might just be kind of trickling towards your goal, you would be amazed at the progress. That goes into number five. So I am a huge fan of visualization. For my big goals, I have literally a poster board on my wall and I track my progress every day, every week, so I can see where I'm at. And it just, it feels good. I use some markers and I start coloring. It might look a little crazy to somebody, but to me, it makes sense. And every morning when I walk in my office and I look at it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm a badass. I did that. <laughs> Fill in whatever words or whatever motivational speech works for you. But again, seeing this, this progress visually tells your brain, we're getting there. Keep going. We're getting closer, closer. I mean, I've said it so many times on the show that money is 90% what goes on in our heads. It's 10% the actual steps, the actual habits. So if we can really work on that 90%, the rest kind of comes along. And before we know it, we have achieved the goal. So make this personal to you, but there are countless stats, again, around the, the science behind visualization and writing down our goals. I think there was a statistic, I cannot remember who said it, so forgive me for that, but something like writing down your goals and looking at it weekly you are nine, I think it's nine times more likely to achieve them than somebody who doesn't on a scale of one to 10. All right, so don't quote me exactly, but the root is in visualizing your goals and the power of it. All right, number six. So one thing I really admire about what you've done, Amanda, is staying, again, laser focused. And with money, there can be so many goals. We don't know where to start and we just do a semi half ass job on all the goals it's why if we're talking about debt payoff, we actually need a strategy. There are two strategies. They're easy and they're brilliant. They both work. It's paying off the debt with the highest interest rate first or paying off the debt with the lowest debt first. It keeps you focused on what you're doing without getting distracted by all of the numbers. This really goes back to point number one and number two. If, if your student loans are your focus and you feel really good about being able to ramp up your oh shit fund going forward, then it might just make sense to pay them all off and then shift your focus back to your emergency fund. I'm just throwing out ideas here. This is all a really personal decision to make. But again, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, okay, this, this is what is really going to motivate me. If I do this, then I'm committing to myself that I'm going to work hard to build up my emergency fund to at least have one month worth of savings in a relatively short amount of time because now I don't have those loans to pay off. I'm Samantha Cole. 
host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. But you might be the person where you're thinking, well, I like the balanced approach. I like the idea of paying off a little bit of the student loan every month and saving a little bit for the emergency fund. That's what's just going to make me feel better. Or you might be the person that says, you know what? No, I'm going to feel better if I build up my emergency fund. Then I know I know I have the safety and then I can come back to aggressively paying off my student loan. So there isn't one correct way to do this. I think this is why... It's so challenging, and Amanda, maybe why you decided to reach out for the pep talk, because there isn't one way. There isn't, uh, you know, with money, there there isn't always a black or white answer. There's a lot of gray area. So my last tip would be to really root in your numbers every week and every month. Know where your money's going. I don't care whether you're super flush with cash right now, or you're living paycheck to paycheck, nickel to nickel. Being in your numbers every week and every month is going to guarantee that you start seeing progress and that you can make change with your money. And then we've got to bring some intentionality to our daily spending. So this doesn't sound like it's an issue for you, Amanda, but I know I've been caught in vicious cycles of wanting to achieve a money goal, but also spending money like crazy without thinking. Can anyone relate? (laughs) I hope I'm not alone in this one especially as we head into the holidays, I can get really irrational with my spending and I have to really dial it back quite a bit. So understanding the why behind your money goal. So how will this goal change your life, make you feel better, impact you, impact others, whatever it might be. And then looking at each penny you spend with some intentional thinking. Allow yourself some space and time to step back from big purchases. I do a 48-hour rule. So if I still want to buy something after 48 hours and I've looked at my numbers and it makes sense, I can buy it. If not, which nine out of 10 times it ends up being, I don't really need that anyway. But you get the idea. You can also make this a 30-day rule or a 24-hour rule. Whatever is going to work for you works. The best part, again, you get to make the rules. But being intentional is all about rooting into the mindset behind buying. Are you buying something to feel better? Are you buying it just because you're bored? Are you buying it because you feel some peer pressure? Are you buying it because you need to feel like you can show off to someone? Or are you buying something because you really want and you really need this item? So there's also a psychology behind why we make purchases. So thinking about that is is super important. So that was a very long seven-step pep talk for you, Amanda. But again, this is such a great question, and I'm so glad you asked it because I know there are many, many other people listening right now that are probably in a very similar space and just not sure what to do. If you have a community question, again, just head to the link in the show notes and fill out whatever's on your mind, a success story, a question, something that you're pondering, let me know. And I am more than happy to share it. And if you are up for being a guest on this show with me and talking out your question, man, I'm all up for that as well. Just let me know in the in the question. If you love this podcast, do me a favor, share it with friends, family members, anybody who you think could take some value away. As always, you can head to the show notes for all the links to our episode sponsors, and I'll see you back here in a few days for a brand new episode. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. 
Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC.